Hello everyone and welcome back to video 7 of the Gameplay Ability System Setup. I'm Thomas Mahon and for this video we're going to be going over the damage execution. If you enjoy any of these videos and want to see more of them, please like and subscribe, ring that bell, it really helps us make more of these videos. If you're just joining us, all we've done so far is we've set up an ability system component on the third person C++ template and given them the attributes health and damage mod. We also gave them speed in the last video. Here are all the default values we've set up using the basic attribute metadata system if you're just joining us. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to go to our C++ classes, to the project folder, and I'm just going to create another class in here, C++ class, show all classes, and this is a gameplay effect execution calculation. Before we create this class, we want to make sure that Visual Studio is closed. And I mentioned earlier that there is a character restriction to how many characters you can have in the C++ class. Gameplay effect execution calculation is like the limit. So I recommend naming this something generic. Since this is our only one we're going to do, we're just going to call this damage execution GAS. That way we can definitely find it. All right, so now that that's done, it automatically opens up Visual Studio and opens up our C++ file. Let's jump over into our header and declare our functions. So actually the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to generated uClass body. Because for whatever reason, it doesn't do that correctly. We don't need to declare, we just actually need to define a default constructor. And this takes a constant object initializer. All right, so we just wanna make sure that we have this function. This is our default constructor that's created by being a child of the damage execution. So we don't actually need to define it in here because it's already defined in the parent class. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our attributes. Now we've talked a little bit about how they're not actually just float values. They have a little bit more to them. They're their own little class doing their own thing. So in order to get them, we have to capture them. And the gameplay ability system has a macro system set up using structures that's really easy to use as soon as you sort of get it going. So I will show you all the tricks to doing that here. So we need to define a new struct, our attribute struct. We need to declare our capture definitions. And then structs in Unreal have their own constructor system. So you can just declare a new constructor. And we need in our constructor to define our capture definitions. We declared them, now we need to define them. And we need to pass in our player player attributes and in order to do that we actually need to include the player attributes file and then the health attribute and there are two more variables here the first of which is a target or source tag so for health we want to get the target's health it's whatever we're hitting with this damage. So we have a source, the one who's dealing the damage, then we have a target, the one that's receiving the damage. We wanna get the health of the target and the damage mod of the source. And then the final flag we have is a true or false, which is whether or not we snapshot the value. So a, what a snapshot does is it says when we create this damage execution, capture the value of this attribute at that time, or do we want to wait until we actually execute the execution? So we'll create it when the effect is created. So imagine you were firing a projectile. So the damage execution is created when the effect is created on the projectile, but it's not actually going to apply until it hits the target. So you want to get the shooter, the source, statistics when they fire the weapon. Because if anything happens to them while the projectile is in flight, you don't want that to affect what the projectile is doing because it's already been fired. And then when you run the damage execution, you want to, at that moment, capture the value of the health and the armor and everything else you need from the target. 
So that's why we have this flag. So now we have our capture definitions that exist in this struct. And we need to jump back over to that constructor that we defined here. We need to make a struct of our attributes. And then there is a collection called relevant attributes to capture that exists in the damage execution class. So we need to add to that collection attributes.health. So when we made these capture definitions, they created two properties for each attribute. So when we look at health, we can see health def and health property. So health property is a pointer that points to the U property that actually holds this attribute. And health def points to the definition of the attribute. So it allows us to access the value. So we need the definition. And then we'll be able to add modifiers by default to any attributes that we capture. So we could modify a damage modifier and say, well, for this particular attack, for whatever reason, you're only going to get half of your damage modifier. But we don't want to do that with health. We don't want to even give the ability to do it. So we're going to add it to another collection called invalid scoped modifier attributes. And that just means it won't show up in the menu on the gameplay effect. And we'll get to that when we add this execution to a gameplay effect in just a minute. And then we need to implement the actual execution function itself, which is execute. Oh, I'm in C++. Perhaps. So this needs to be declared in the header file. Just move that over here. And we'll, declare it. So we'll go ahead and grab this definition or declaration and we'll find it over here. And then we will need to get some basic information out of our ability systems from the target and the source and sort through these execution parameters. This is all just pretty basic stuff, so I'll just sort of run through it and explain it as I go. So we need uh, destructive attributes again, and then we need a, a spec. So this is our gameplay effect spec. So this just basically gives us the gameplay effect that owns this. And then we need the target and source ability system components. We're gonna get these out of the execution parameters. And then we wanna get a reference to each of the actors, the target and the source. And we wanna do a little bit of error catching. And then we need a gameplay tag container for each of our target and source tags as well. And we need aggregator evaluate parameters. I call this evaluation parameters. And we need to set the target tags and the evaluation parameters to our target tags. And same for source tags. And then we need to get our capture definitions and we need to set actual floats to them so we can do math with them. And we're going to attempt to calculate captured attribute magnitude health definition. So now we're good to do a little bit of math and for this we're just doing very basic math. We're going to do, we're going to make a float damage done and we're, I'm just going to hard code a base damage of 10 I'm going to multiply that by whatever the damage mod is. And then our output, execution output. It, it's a structure, but it works kind of like a delegate. So we can add modifiers to the execution output. So when this execution is done, it's going to execute this stuff. This is basically creating a function for evaluating the modifier data, modifying the health property by damage done. We're asking very nicely for the attribute to please reduce the health property by damage done. There's still a chance for it to back out and not do this function. We'll get more into that later. All right, so now we have our damage execution done. So now let's create a GE to hold this damage execution and then apply it to the player. So let's save this, go back into Unreal. We're gonna compile. Ability system component. So that means we need to have our ability system component in our header class. Compile again. 
Okay, so I accidentally hit metadata here. We actually need parameters. Oh, the save. Handy one. Uh, compile. So we erased const over here. I remember doing it, but I can't remember why I thought that was a good idea. So yeah, please ignore that. <laughs> so now when we compile, this should work just fine. Now we need to create a gameplay effect where we're going to do this direct damage. So in player abilities, I'm going to create another blueprint class. Ideally this would be like a base class of direct damage, and we'll probably get to this when we do weapons and things like that, I'm sure I'll make children of it. That way you can just set up this damage execution once, and just set these things once, then inherit from it and say, well this is one particular weapon, has these other modifiers or things. And then we're going to add an execution here, and in our calculation class we're going to select damage execution GAS boot, and that should do it. So our duration policy needs to be instant because damage is done instantly unless we're applying it on a period or anything like that. We don't need to worry about stacking because instant effects aren't really added. You can also add tags but the only thing they're really going to matter for is like application checks. So we could add tags for direct damage but they're not going to be able to block other tags. They're just able to detect whether there's a tag they need to have for an application requirement on an instant effect. We're going to go into our level blueprint and we're going to say when we push the T button we're also going to damage the player. And we're going to go ahead and do apply gameplay effect to target because I didn't really build it to not have a target. Um, so our player will be targeting themselves and then we will grab our GE direct damage, and that's what we're applying to our player from themselves. And if you wanted to clean this up. All right, so now when we push the T, the T key, we should be dealing direct damage. And based on our character stats, the damage mod is one, the standard damage is 10, so we should be doing 10 damage. And we should be reducing our speed by half. And it doesn't look like we are doing 10 damage. Well, that's not good. Okay, so we need to have a tag in here. Add a new. So we're hitting some sort of issue in the damage execution that is not applying damage. But I found what our problem is here. The problem is that I declared this execute implementation function as public. It should not be public. It should just exist in the box. All right. So now when we hit play, we can hit T, and our health continues to go down. And remember, we put a stacking rule on our speed that it goes in half only once. Every time we hit T, we're taking damage. Now, you'll see that it will continue indefinitely and nothing happens. There's no jests or anything like that. So in the next video, we're going to create a, an active ability that responds to a gameplay event to allow the character to die.